bottle of rum. <laughs> rum and grog. In the movies, alcohol is frequently showcased as an essential part of naval life, loved by pirates and naval officers alike, particularly during the Age of Sail. Sometimes this may seem to be exaggerated by characters like Yellowbeard or Captain Jack Sparrow. Hide the rum. Though these characters are hilarious, the relationship between alcohol and naval life isn't as exaggerated as it may seem. Alcohol was an important way of life for sailors. Fresh water was hard to keep and hard to come by during the age of sail. Adding citrus juice and alcohol, commonly rum to water to create grog, was one way to make stagnant water more palatable. Alcohol had a twofold effect on a ship's water. It made the water taste better and also helped to reduce algae and bacteria growth, though this could not be fully relied on. Captured rainwater was the best source of fresh water for any ship, which was preferable over water taken from busy English rivers, which could be full of waste. Both rum and lemon and lime juice were officially regulated by the Navy for health and morale. In 1795, Navy regulations required adding small quantities of lemon or lime juice to rations to prevent scurvy. Alcohol was regulated in different ways by different navies throughout history. A daily ration of spirits was tradition in the United States Navy, which dates back to the founding of the Continental Navy in 1775. Drinking was less prolific in the U.S. Navy than the British, and the favored drink was often rye whiskey but it was distributed as tradition, lasting until 1862. It may surprise some, but the daily rum ration was only abolished by the Royal Navy in 1970. Listen here to the reactions of some sailors on receiving their last ever rum ration. Senior senior rights and officers still allowed to drink at lunchtime. And surely an officer is a more technical person than, than we are. All they're doing by stopping the top is stopping the, the only social occasion for junior eights. It's the only meeting time that junior eights ever get together is by when they have their top. They should have gone into the offices where we work and see how we did work after having our rum. Well, put it this and way, we work better. In the Royal Canadian Navy, rum rationing lasted until 1972. The Royal New Zealand Navy abolished the practice in 1990. The British dubbed the last day of receiving their rum ration Black Tot Day, which took place July 31, 1970. The rum ration was traditionally called the Tot. Alcohol rations go back to the 16th century, with the founding of the Royal Navy, but the Tot, or modern rum ration, goes back to 1850. At this time, it consisted of one-eighth of an imperial pint, or 71 milliliters of strong rum. Senior officers historically had their rum neat, with most sailors receiving their rum watered down, as grog. In the early 16th and 17th centuries, sailors were rationed beer, upwards to one gallon or eight pints worth a day. But beer spoiled more easily than spirits, and also took up significant room on a ship. Wine was an easier option than beer, but spirits were best. In 1655, spirits replaced beer and wine on most ships. Due to it taking up less room on a ship, and being more resistant to spoilage. Originally, all sailors got their spirits neat. It's said that sailors would prove the strength of their spirits by dousing gunpowder with their drink and seeing if it would still burn. Traditional naval rum had an alcohol by volume rate of near 57%, making it highly flammable. It was thus stored carefully in the depths of the ship. Rum was often procured from distillers in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and the British Virgin Islands. Rum rations were strictly logged, rum was valuable, and deemed essential for the service. As rum was part of a sailor's pay, a sailor could elect not to take their ration, and instead receive three pence a day. Sailors could also buy great favor from one another by giving away their ration. The distribution of rum was taken seriously, and done so punctually each day, typically at 11 a.m. and again at 4 or 5 p.m. The rum ration distribution was announced by calling out, Up Spirits by the ship's bosun. Sailors would reply, stand fast the Holy Ghost. Rum was such a quintessential part of naval culture, even shipbuilders on land could receive daily rum as part of their pay. To underscore how valuable rum was to sailors, taut glasses were kept separate from other glasses and only washed on the outside, believing any residue of past tots would make future pours even stronger. Of course, large quantities of strong drink caused issues aboard ships as well. In 1740, Admiral Vernon instituted grog, the required watering down of rum to a 4 to 1 ratio. This made hoarding alcohol trickier for sailors, 
who might be saving it up for one great piss-up. The name Grog came from Admiral Vernon, who is nicknamed Old Grog due to wearing a coat of grogram cloth. Today drinking in the US and Canadian Navy is tightly regulated at sea, and only done on special occasions. Drinking was sharply put to a halt in the 1920s aboard American ships during the Prohibition period, and only slightly loosened up in the 1930s. On most British Royal Navy ships, it's still possible to drink. This is the opening of the Queen's Head pub aboard the carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth. Drinking on British ships is regulated in a similar way to drink driving laws of the country, keeping consumption under three cans of beer a day. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching my video on the importance of rum in naval history. Because a good sea story never started with an apple juice. Take care and have a nice rest of your day.